Chapter 2. Sampling with the MPC 2000 XL. From the main screen, let's head over to the sample page by holding down shift and hitting number 4 on the keypad. From the top left, I can see that my input is currently set to analog. If I've got the 8 individual output expansion, I can change that to digital using the data wheel. But I'm not going to actually record from the digital input today because I've got nothing connected to the digital input. But if I wanted to sample from the digital input, I just have to make sure that the source of my digital signal is outputting 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz. So let's move across to mode. And here I can see that the MPC is ready to record in stereo. However, I've only got one audio jack connected to the rear of the MPC sample input. So I need to change the mode to mono so I don't record two channels. And I can choose mono right or mono left. So I'm going to use mono left. So if we move across to monitor, the L slash R represents the left and right main stereo output. So we can disable that using the data wheel to off. Or if we have the eight individual outputs, we can actually select one of the four pairs of the individual outputs. So if I set that to off and play some audio into the MPC sample input, we can see that the audio is metering, but we're not hearing anything. So if I turn the monitor input on, Now we can hear audio coming into the uh, sample input via the main left and right outputs. So if we draw our attention to what's going on in this little level meter window, we can see some strange little blocks that have appeared on the uh, left channel. And so the grey block that we can see at the far right side, that's a measurement of the loudest peak from the previous audio signal that came into the MPC sample input. The outlined cursor we have under the word meter represents the threshold. So if I cursor over to threshold I can change that. And the threshold is actually quite handy because if I hit record the MPC will sit and wait for the audio signal to come in and once it surpasses or at least meets that threshold that will trigger the MPC to start recording for exactly this amount of time here. So currently 10 seconds. So again, if I try to arm the MPC for recording, it'll just sit there waiting for an input signal. And I can cancel that using a soft key. Or I can force the MPC into recording by hitting start. And then I'll cancel it because I don't actually want that silence that we just recorded. But the other thing I need to uh, work out is how long I'm going to sample for. So we can change the time to just about anything we want because we're only limited by the amount of memory that we have in the MPC 2000. So if yours is maxed out like this one is, at 32 megabytes, then you can sample for 378.6 seconds. I'm only going to need 5 seconds for this demo, so I can punch that in on the keypad, and then I can cue my audio. Now the thing to note is that this grey block that represents the peak can be reset with a soft key, but I also can add more gain on the input by adjusting the uh, record gain knob here. And I can just keep resetting the peak until I get it just perfect. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll adjust the threshold one last time and try to get that at a nice level as well. And we also have this pre-rec option over here. So pre-record is quite a useful feature because it will retain up to 100 milliseconds of audio just prior to the threshold being tripped. And in many cases, it will have the attack or the start of your loop 
if your threshold wasn't set correctly and you clip the front of your sample. So you can consider that as a bit of a safety net when sampling. There aren't many options hidden on this screen, so we've pretty much covered everything that we can see here. These are all just going to report the same amount of memory that we have. Let us know how many megabytes we've got installed. So I'll just set this uh, threshold to something sufficient and then cue some audio for sampling. I'm quite sure we clipped the front of that. Yep, we did. So the funny thing is, I can actually name it from here as well. So I'll just use my soft keys again. Enter that in and I'll play that. And that, you can hear that clipped. So we'll keep that. So by holding down shift and hitting number five on the keypad, you end up on the trim page and this is where you flip your sample. You can reverse it, you can loop it, crop it, convert it to a different bit rate, sample rate. Um, you can chop it up into smaller pieces. You can do a lot of different things. So starting from the top left of the trim page, I can see that the sound we currently have in view is test one. If I cursor down to the ST field, that represents the sample start field. Then we have the sample end field, and then we have the view. We can set this to left or right, and that would be the left or right channels of a stereo sample if we recorded in stereo. Below, across the bottom, we have some more soft keys. So we're currently on the trim page, and the trim page allows us to crop the sample. The loop page would allow us to loop the sample. Zone allows us to chop the sample into tinier, smaller pieces. But what I wanted to show you is the open window feature on this particular field of start and end opens up another window where you can use the zoom keys to magnify or zoom out of your sample. Now what I should actually point out is that the sample start by default should be on zero like many other samplers but ours is on 4410 and that's partly due to the generosity of the uh, pre-record audio buffer that's added 100 milliseconds of audio to the front of our sample. So if I zoom in, you can see where the threshold kicked in is right there at 4410. Everything before it was so generously donated to us by the audio pre-record buffer. So now I can adjust that. and get right in there and fine tune it to exactly where I wanted it. Okay, so that's good. So now I'll trim up my end. And I'll just look under the microscope, see exactly where the end is. Great. So now what I can do is hit the edit soft key and this section here we've got a few options but this one in particular at discard will just crop off the ends, the start, what's before the start and after the end point. So if I cancel that for a second we can sort of see we've got this extra big piece up here and a tiny little piece down here. So hitting discard will now make our sample start zero and we'll have a new calculated end point. And so now when I hit the sample, there's just 0% fat on that now. What I can also do is visit the params page, the parameters, and adjust the tune. This is just a little workflow that I like to use. Sometimes I like to hear the sample start nice and slowly so I can hear exactly what's going on right at the front. All right, that's pretty good. So now what we'll do is we'll move across to the loop page and with the data wheel we can change the loop to on and the loop points are the whole sample. So, And if I hold that down, 
it should just loop forever which is good and now if I go back to the params page now we've got some extra information here because the loop function that you can see here will work when loop is enabled so it's trying to tell us what our BPM is so it's 95.2 so if I was to go back to the sequencer and tell the sequencer to use a tempo of 95.2 then we should be able to achieve that exact loop so that's handy as well all right so just getting back to the loop path, we can adjust the start point of our loop again by holding down shift and using the note, note variation slider or we can just move it with the data entry knob or we can type in exactly what we want uh, or we can jump in larger amounts of data wheel increments as well but we also have this other feature if we hit open window we can change the loop length to fixed and so now if I shut this window you can see that when I move the two field the end is moving with it so it's almost like it's going to retain the length so which is another good feature if you need to uh, try to get the loop points accurate without them clipping so if we move across now to zone so if we cursor over to zone and hit open window we can nominate any number up to 16 so I'll make it 8 and hit the soft key, do it. So now you can see that my sample's been divided into 8 zones. And this is usually the point where I would change play X to zone. So now when I hit play X, it's just going to play the zone. So I can flick through the zones and hit play X. And here, if I adjust my sample start, I can just clean up my zones and make sure they're all cut up cleanly. And I can use my open window feature on the different zones to trim them accordingly. Once you've trimmed up your zones, you can look in the edit soft key menu I've got a few different options I can do in here as well. I can time stretch, I can reverse a section, silence a section, delete a section, um, grab a new sound and insert it into a zone. Um, there's a whole bunch of different options in here, discard. But the one I'm going to show you right now is the slice sound option. And what this will do is it will take all those little zones and cut them up into little pieces, into eight little pieces, just like I have zones. And then it'll add a little safety buffer to the end of it, of a margin of 30. And if I want, I can put yes to create a new program, which will then allow me to go straight to the sequencer and just start recording with it. So let's just have a look at that now. If I hit do it, and now visit the main screen, we can see that there's a, a program sitting on track one called test one. So now these are my zones all cut up onto pads. So let's head back to the trim page, shift five. And from here, I'll hit the edit soft key. And let's try a different option. I can delete, silence, reverse. Let's do reverse. If you've got your cursor on the name of your sound, you can also click open window. And we'll just quickly run through these other options at the bottom. Delete, you can delete just the sound, or you can delete everything in memory. Sometimes that's handy if you need to purge everything out of memory. You can copy the sound if you need to make a backup, or if you want to do a, an alternate edit to one of the sounds. And here you can adjust the name of your um, copy if you need to. Uh, and again, you can copy the name if you need to do loads and loads of 
little edits on all different sounds. You can copy the name so you're not smashing in the buttons every time you need to rename a sound. And then we've got a convert option. Now we could convert a mono to stereo file, but that's not as exciting as this resample. And in here we can convert our 16-bit samples into 12-bit or 8-bit samples. And we can also nominate whatever frequency as well. I'm not going to do a demo of that because it takes a long time to process. So I'll let you guys experiment with those. Uh, if we get out of there, and if we head over to the edit page, we've already seen what discard does. We can loop from start to end. That just, it's like a quick way of moving your end and start points. Um, you can copy a section, uh, like for example, where your start and end points would be to a new sound. You can insert another sound into the section start. Um, so it's got to be another sound in memory and you nominate that here. You can delete a section. Obviously this is all based on your start and end points. You can silence the section, reverse the section, and you can time stretch. And again, time stretch takes a hell of a long time to process. So I won't be doing any time stretches here, but if you've got one, experiment with it because um, you can get some great effects out of the uh, time stretch algorithms on these. I'll just take you through some of the other options that are available to you through the PlayX Audition soft key. Zone obviously is intended for the Zone tab, so you can audition your various slices. Uh, the other option before ST is more of a uh, trim audition feature. Uh, before ST represents the start here, so if I was to change this to this little section here, hitting play X will now play this portion of audio at the start, up to the sample start. Here on before 2, this is intended for the uh, loop tab, and similar again, on the loop tab, we've got loop 2 instead of sample start. So if I change this up to this point, play X will now play this portion of audio. And then we've got after end. So again on the loop page, after the loop point, play X will just play this portion of audio. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it. And then you've got all, which will play everything. So thanks for watching. That concludes chapter two, sampling on the MPC 2000 XL. And if you found this helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave any questions or comments in the comment area below.